of the president's table and the leaders of our country. And whether you uh, agree with who's an office or not, you had better be praying for our president and our vice president and our leaders. They have a, an enormous weight. If you ever walk in Washington, D.C., you just feel it. All the pressures of the world in that place. But you cannot appreciate how far we've drifted as a nation until you realize where we started from. George Washington made this statement. He said, it is impossible to righteously govern the world without God and the Bible. Amen. Andrew Jackson proclaimed, the Bible is the rock upon which our republic stands. Samuel Adams remarked, he who made all men have made the truths necessary to human happiness, obvious to all. Our forefathers opened the Bible to all. Patrick Henry, he admonished, it, it cannot be emphasized too clearly and too often that this nation was founded not by religionists, but by Christians. Not on religion, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. In 1812, President James Madison signed a, a federal bill aiding the Bible Society of Philadelphia in its goal to the mass distribution of the Bible because the president felt like the Bible needed to be in everyone's hands. You see the evidence that our nation perhaps has drifted from where we once were. My question is, what are you looking at? When you look at our nation, what do you see? Are you looking at what people are doing or what God is doing? Are you concerned about politics or the kingdom of God? You, you, you see the enemy but do you see what God is doing? You see people who are making poor choices. You see uh, special interest groups forcing their immoral agenda on America. But have you ever stopped to, to look and to ask God to show you, what are you doing in our nation? Do you have spiritual eyes to discern the times? I want you to hear this carefully. You and I are not going to change this country, but God can. And there's a spiritual battle that's being fought. And unless God's people return to Him and are filled with His Spirit, we'll be disoriented to what He is doing, and all of our best efforts and our campaigns and our fights for what is right will fail. Because we'll be out of step with what He is doing, and He is the only one who can bring revival. And when you begin to see what's on God's heart, it will dramatic, dramatically impact how you pray. In the midst of God disciplining our nation, are you still praying, God bless America? As America is running from God, are you simply asking for His blessing? Are you still praying, God bless my church, bless my family, bless me with good things? See, if you truly saw what God is saying and what God is doing, we fall on our, our faces and cry out for mercy. Amen. God, forgive us. Have mercy upon us as a nation. And somehow we want to just cover up all the things that are going on and say, God, bless me. It's a self-centered prayer. When our nation needs those who would cry out to God for repentance. Hear this carefully. If the church of God does not understand what it means to be the house of prayer, America doesn't stand a chance. Yeah. Not, not because... Politicians can't fix it, but because they can't turn aside the hand of God's discipline. One of God's most severe actions that He could ever take, I think, is found in a phrase in Romans chapter one, when it says He gave them over. They chose something other than God, and so He gave it to them. They, they could have had a right relationship with God. They could have had His blessings in all kinds of ways, but they chose something else. And so, He let them have it. He gave it to them. And He stepped back. And they would, they would experience the consequence of a life without God. And there are times I think to myself, is He saying to America, if you want something other than me, go ahead. See what it will be like. See what life is like without me and my hedge of protection with you. Unless we would be in the Lord. My simple prayer every day 
is that Almighty God will guide me, that He will open my eyes, that I might see, that He will cleanse my ears, that I might hear, that He will help my mind, that I might comprehend what He would have me to do to move our city forward. I thank you all for your prayers. I thank you all for coming out this morning and for believing that God is working in me and in you to move our city forward. Thank you very much.